Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're making a cologne for men. I recently saw this posted on Par Perfume Archaeology, an Instagram account that is that is wonderful. I believe it's this French guy. He reviews uh, <clears throat> company patents for formulas, and then I guess he builds those formulas and compares them to the fragrances that he knows, and he'll post you know these formulas on his Instagram channel. Now, he recently posted one for Dior Eau Sauvage, and I took a look at that formula and went, interesting, I've seen that formula countless times in Ferminish patents in the late 90s and early 2000s. They use that formula in there as a base formula, and then for various molecules that they're writing patents about, they will add that molecule into that base formula, and then they will compare and contrast. So I've, I've seen this formula plenty of times. I have never made it. And then I found it on Perfume Archaeology, but tagged as Eau Sauvage, and I figured, let's build it. I'm very familiar with Eau Sauvage. I have it. I wear it quite often. And uh, so today we're going to find out, is this Eau Sauvage, or is this just a classic Eau de Cologne. Let's start with the pyramid. Only 17% of this is in base notes. And part of that base is stuff that I have added, whether it be Vertofix or ISOE Super, that is, uh, call it, it's left out of that base formula. And it's where that substitute molecule would go in, uh, in these various patents. So there's a piece of the pie that I, I put in some ISOE Super. I think in this case, I have Vertofix here. Um, but, uh, but that's, <clears throat> You know, 17% of the formula is the base. Most of it is between mid to top notes. 68% are uh, what I have classified as, you know, between 10 hours and zero hours as far as uh, the lifespan on a strip. And then taking a look at the category breakout, 25% herbals and aromatics. That's lavender, linalil, acetate, you know, lavendin, um, clary sage. Uh, and then 26% in citrus and, um, you know, I, I, I put terpenes with my citrus because they're nice and bright and sharp, but uh, I'm guessing lots of bergamot and lemon and then, you know, some florals <clears throat> for some support. So interesting. Let's get this started. Okay, today, again, we're not going to start with the base. There's not much base to start with. Because this is supposed to be an eau de cologne, what I want to start with is actually up top. I want to start with the aromatics and the actual, just the top notes, the citrus. That's a focal point for, uh, for eau de cologne. So that's where I'm going to start. We're going to start with the aromatics and citrus and then move down to the muguet or lily of the valley type materials and see how that starts to come together before we add in the ionones and geranium and, um, and the fruity notes. So why don't we start with lavender? I've got some Bulgarian lavender here. It's 11%, almost 12% of the formula. So it's a fair bit. I'll leave this out to refill. This is equal parts lavender, almost equal parts lavender and linalil acetate. Linalil acetate, if I remember correctly, is a uh, is an aroma chemical that it exists within lavender, lavendin, clary sage, etc. So this will certainly help to support the lavender. All right, linalil acetate is done. Rosemary. Rosemary is wonderful. When I first got into this, into perfumery, and I was testing on a scent strip rosemary, I was expecting that dirty. Well, I had some technical difficulties there. In any case, I was expecting that dirty rosemary smell. 
When it dried down, it smelled like tiger balm. And I'm like, holy cow, is it rosemary that's in tiger balm? Is it rosemary that gives tiger balm that fresh, spicy, herbal smell? Well, turns out it was, but I didn't know. Didn't know until I got into perfumery. All right, caraway. I need to remind myself of caraway. Don't use this. I don't see this very often in formulas. Also, what I like doing, one thing I very much like doing as I'm going through formulas, if I run into a, uh, a material I'm unfamiliar with and I dip it, I put it down here, but I don't write anything on it. And it serves as a challenge to memorize the smell, really internalize it in my brain. Okay, ooh, caraway is nice. It's fresh, minty, herbal. Almost, is it licorice? A little licorice-y. Smells very nice. Okay. <clears throat> Might have to find more ways to get caraway in my formulas. That's a nice, it's a very nice smell. All right. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's very nice. We got one more. Eugenol. Eugenol is spicy. It smells like clove. Doesn't really belong with the aromatics, but if, uh, if we're talking about herbs and spices in a recipe, they just go together. They complement each other. I think eugenol pairs well with the aromatics, so I'll usually put it in at the same time. Unless, of course, a formula is extremely spice forward and there's a call it a spice accord, maybe there's cardamom, a lot of nutmeg, pink pepper, etc. Then I'll put it in separately. I'll, you know, I'll put all that in, in one go, uh, but keep the aromatics and the spices, the spices separate. But in this case, we're gonna, we are going to put them in together. So let's start. This is test number one. Pen. Call this herbs and spices. It's number one. We're going to dip, let it chill. And we're going to move right on to these top notes. Pedigrain, citral, mandarin, and bergamot. Lots of bergamot. Let's see, do I have enough? I have enough. <clears throat> bergamot is almost 15% of this formula. I'm going to have to do a few petfuls. Almost. All right. Close enough. Bergamot. This bergamot is, I can't say the word because I haven't tried to pronounce it. Berga, bergaptine. Bergaptine free. <clears throat> it's been processed to remove some of the skin irritants. Um, but it's from Calabria, Italy. Next up, let's do the citral. Plenty of citral in this formulation. Almost 8% of the formula is citral. Okay. Next up is Mandarin. Now in this formula, I didn't see if it was yellow mandarin, green mandarin, red mandarin. It was just mandarin. So we're using red mandarin today. It's got a beautiful color to it. And a wonderful, fresh, zingy smell. It's somewhere between orange and lemon. It's bright, but it's sweet. It's just, it's kind of like a nice halfway point between orange and lemon. And pedigrain, pedigrain is wonderful. Pedigrain is a little dirty, a little, almost like it's a little oily, like when gas spills or oil spills on the ground. And uh, <laughs> I imagine I'm standing under a lemon tree, but underneath me is concrete <clears throat> and there's an oil spill <clears throat> and it just rained. And I'm getting the wafts off the concrete, but also off of the tree. Oh, 
Okay. Let's get our, this is our top number two, and let's give this a sniff. We'll let that relax while we smell the herbal core. Well, the caraway really pops through, interestingly. The rosemary makes it dirty. The lavender is just common lavender. Linalyl acetate boosts that. Rosemary gives it a little grittiness, but that caraway, that fennel licorice type smell. Interesting. Interesting. Let's smell the tops. This needs time. It needs time. Okay, so let's add in these Lily of the Valley materials. And I'm going to add in <clears throat> the Hedione while we're at it. This is more of a modifier <clears throat> than a core note, but still. Okay. Hedion. Next up, Jasmine Sis. Just a splash of Jasmine Sis or Sis Jasmine. This stuff is interesting. It's a, it's a little earthy. It's a jasmine smell, but it's got this like celery, <clears throat> celery vibe to it. Okay, benzyl acetate. This is becoming one of my favorite materials. I've noticed as I'm looking through patents, this is a very, very, very common material, especially in the mid 90s. Well, the, I'd say the mid 80s, actually, all the way through <clears throat> the early 2000s. And anything, any eau de toilette for men, um, many of the bases contain a fair bit of benzyl acetate. Then followed by linalyl acetate and geranyl acetate. Something about these acetates. All right. Amyl cinnamic aldehyde <clears throat> or alpha amyl cinnamaldehyde. Let's give this a refresher as well. So I've got caraway over here. Still going strong, still minty. With a touch of fennel. Hmm, it's getting a little dirtier. I might need to do a fresh batch or a fresh dilution. Okay, and then we have amyl cinnamic aldehyde. That one's a little tougher to smell right now. Let's let it chill out. Let's add some in here. That'll do. <clears throat> All right, next strip. We're going to call this one Lily of the Valley, number three. We'll dip, we'll go back and we'll smell these top notes with the herbal. Okay, that's nice. Once it chills out, that's nice. The pedigrain you can smell. The pedigrain and the citral kind of complement the, uh, the caraway. There's like a richness, there's a core richness there. That's nice. That is nice. All right. We're going to save the aldehyde, helional. We're going to save those for the end. Um, actually, we're going to take our peach aldehyde or gamma undecalactone. We're going to move it down to our rosy core. Okay, so plenty on the next phase. We've got some sweets like raspberry ketone, allyl seclus. <laughs> Allele cyclohexyl propionate, which is a replacement. I do not have. I do not have allele phenoxy acetate. I can't find that material. Um, so, looking at the the uh, description of the uh, of the smell, it sounds like it's close to allele cyclohexyl propionate. So, we'll just use that. And plus, it's a small amount. So. You know, if I mess it up, 
no big deal. Then we have Iralia or methyl ionone, phenyl ethyl acetate, some ionone beta, geranium, and linalool. Okay, let's start with geranium. This geranium is from Egypt. Geranium from Egypt, to my nose, is just a touch brighter than the geranium bourbon or bourbon. I don't know how to say it. Silly American. They both smell wonderful. They both smell like geranium. If you have a, if you have a formula that calls for geranium, just you can use. I think you can use whatever. At some point, I know that those distinctions matter, but especially if you're just getting started, the distinction between Haitian vetiver, bourbon vetiver, you know, Egyptian geranium, bourbon geranium, so on and so forth, they kind of don't matter, not at least when you're first getting started. That'll do. Lots of linen wall. This will not only boost and support the floral aspect, but it also supports the top end, like the bergamot. Phenyl ethyl acetate or phenethyl acetate. That's another fun thing about this hobby is you get all the different names of one molecule or one uh, ingredient. For example, phenyl ethyl alcohol, also known as phenethyl alcohol, also known as phenethylol. Very fun. Keeps you on your toes. Ionone beta. Just a splash of this. Okay. So just for support, just for a little color. Okay, that's enough. And then N-methyl ionone. Iralia, also known as isoraldine. Point one six. Okay, it's a good dose. Overdid it a little bit, but that's okay. I am not trying to get 100% spot on. Just trying to get close. Kind of like horseshoes and hand grenades. Three more ingredients here to our floral, fruity, supportive core. Aldehyde C14, which, as you probably know, is not actually an aldehyde. It's a lactone, gamma and deca lactone. Just a splash of this, just to give it the creaminess, the creamy fruitiness. It's soft, it's delicate. It's a wonderful material. It's a very common material as well. The next up, raspberry ketone. Now there is just, uh, to say there's a breath of this in here would be to overstate how much raspberry ketone in here. I'm going to see if I can just get a, a bubble splash. That'll still probably be too much. 0.00, .00 or 0.01%. So yeah, that's not much. Okay. Let's smell our, well here, let's dip. We'll put on our floral core. Oh, no. We need the allyl cyclohexyl propionate. Where are you at? Okay. One gram. Or point, point one. Here we go. All right, now we'll dip. I'll give it a little shake. It's a nice color so far. I'll give it a little dip. And as it's chilling out, I'm going to go back to the uh, um, alpha The 
alpha hexyl cinnamaldehyde. Alpha cinnamaldehyde? What was it? Amyl cinnamic aldehyde. All right. You definitely get the cinnamic part. And you definitely get the aldehyde part. It's nice. Noted. Caraway. As it ages, it keeps getting a little dirtier. That wonderful brightness off the top is going away. And it's just, it's getting green and it's just getting a little dirtier. Okay, noted. We've got a couple more. We're going to do our base and then we are going to finish up with the Helional and Decanal Aldehyde C10. <clears throat> so next up, to build our base, we have Cinnamic Alcohol, Coumarin, Oak Moss Absolute. We have some Patchouli, Ambrox, Ambroxin, Ambrox Super, and then some Indole. Okay, technical difficulties are good. <clears throat> are solved. Let's start with our oak moss. This is the Robert Tay IFRA compliant oak moss. <clears throat> Reduced atronol, I believe, is the uh, material. Nice and dark, though. Should have, should probably find a, probably could have just used vera moss. All right, how much of this we have? 0.12. Now, when you buy Oak Moss Absolute from, say, Perfumer's Apprentice, <clears throat> it is some solid, sticky, tough to work with stuff. <clears throat> what I ended up doing is uh, I heated it up until I could get a little bit out, and then I uh, <clears throat> put it into put it into a bottle and I ended up making I think like a 20% dilution just so I could work with it because um, it was a real pain in the rear <clears throat> next up let's add our Ambrox which is just a splash of this okay it looks like I need to refill my Ambrox super as well <clears throat> which is okay. I use a ton of this. Indole, 1% dilution, 0.02% of the formula. Let's see what this does. 0.14. Okay. Friends, we have five more ingredients and then we're going to test and see if this is what we think it is. Patchouli light. Maybe one final ingredient. Patchouli light. I figured when I look at this in the bottle, in my bottle of Eau Sauvage, if this truly is Eau Sauvage, it's a, a light greenish yellowish color. And I figured if I use, we got oak moss in here already. That's dark. If I use dark patchouli, this stuff might be getting uh, darker than it should. So I figured I'd go with the light patchouli. <clears throat> Whew, that's strong stuff. The patchouli, I can smell it. Cinnamic alcohol. We'll test this. It's just a couple drops of this heavy molecule. Here we go, cinnamic alcohol. I'm gonna give this one a quick sniff. Okay. It's warm. 
balsamic. Very balsamic. Wow, it's sweet. It's almost almondy. Hmm. That's very nice. When I first sniffed this, I'm like, uh oh, did that go bad? Because when my ionones go bad, it just, if you smelled a, a, a dilution that goes off because of oxidation, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But coming out of the bottle, that's what I smelled here. I'm like, oh, oh no. But this, I'm not getting that anymore. But I can tell why I can got that. This is very warm, very, it's floral, it's sweet, it's almondy. I bet that would pair well with heliotropin. Okay, let's get our coumarin. Oh, here, let's do our, our uh, amyl cinnamic alcohol, aldehyde. Yep. Oh. Yeah, cinnamic aldehyde. Okay, coumarin. <clears throat> let's see, how much coumarin do we have? 0.13 grams. It's about 0.1. I got the wrong calculation here. It's 1.6% of the formula. Here we go. I'm hoping the coumarin lights it up, lightens it up just a little bit. Gives it a little freshness. Coumarin is a base note, but it does give a... That's the best way to put it, a freshness. <clears throat> It almost, to my nose, it make, gives it a wetness. I know that's weird, but it gives it a wetness. All right, we're going to call this base. We're going to dip. Now, I realize I have not smelled any of the stuff down here, so we're going to smell that. We've got two more things we're going to do. We're going to add the helionol and the decanol. We're going to smell that. We're going to do an evaluation, see if it is eau sauvage, and then I'm going to add in the vertofix because YOLO. Okay. Here I'm smelling the herbs and spices with the top, with the bergamot, the citral. It's spicy. The eugenol is coming through. The, the eugenol and the caraway is coming through. Now, when, I, when we add the lily of the valley notes, the hedione, the cisjasmone, what else was there? the amylcinamic aldehyde. This softens the aromatics. It softens the eugenol. It softens the caraway, but it, it, it lifts it up a little bit. It expands it. <clears throat> it's my favorite part about the jasmine type materials like major for mayo, um, <clears throat> floral, um, hedione for that matter, um, alpha hexyl cinnamaldehyde, like all that stuff. Smooths out the rough edges and it just kind of opens it up a little bit. It's like it gives your fragrance some breathing room. All right, so let's see here. We've added our floral core. Two floral. Wow. Um, okay, yeah, that's strong. The geranium's coming. Geranium is coming through. The ionones, the ionone is coming through strong. Hmm. Okay. Now we smell our base. This is amazing. I smell. This is the fragrance with the herbs and spices, the top notes, the lily of the valleys, and the floral coral. When I smell this, I just get geranium. I get ionones. It's just, it's that strong rosy type, you know, rosy type smell. When I smell the addition of the base, it's as if the base just focused solely on that red floral heart and just pulled it down. So it wasn't so in my face. That's nice. It's very nice. It's got a freshness on top that's wonderful. Let's add two key ingredients. Helionol, it's subtle, but it should, it should clarify and lift the, the fragrance. And then aldehyde C10. This, given, depending on the dosage, this can really change 0.1%. Yeah. This can change anything below it, which is fantastic about aldehyde C10, about decanol. So let's 
get this ready. Okay, so we have this is top, that's number six, and then here, because again, yellow, we're gonna do vertifix. <clears throat> uh, that's number seven. Okay, aldehyde C10. Here we go. That'll do it. I have a terrible habit of touching the uh, scent strip to my nose. Doesn't help that I have a big nose, but <sighs> gotta fix that. All right, next up, Helio. Helio is just a wonderful material. I started putting this in, I didn't even check how much goes in. <laughs> 0.08 grams in this. Okay, do it. <clears throat> okay, this is the point at which we are going to evaluate. Is this Eau Sauvage? Right now, I don't know. If it is Eau Sauvage, and it, it's close so far, but I've smelled below, it's close. But the Eau Sauvage that's out today, I don't know. But it, then again, you let this stuff sit for a week, two weeks, um, it can change. You put it on your skin, it can change. So we're going to let this chill. And then the VertoFix. If I want a formula where the base just doesn't have support, but it gives it a little extra push, a dry, maybe a leathery, sharp push, Vertofix goes in rather than ISOE Super, for example, or Sedramber, which uh, is like woody, but it's warmer uh, to my nose. So let's, let's do a smell here. All right, are you au sauvage? It's close. It is close. I'll give it that. Caraway. I need to drop the caraway. At least in today's formulation of Eau Sauvage. If this is it, it's too much caraway. This is a nice fragrance, though. The tough part is, is that when it's fresh out of the... When you've freshly made, it hasn't aged, it hasn't uh, matured, it, you have, it, has, you know, um, it hasn't macerated. Um, it's just, it's hard to gauge, you know. I've made, I've made copies of Sauvage, of uh, M7, like other stuff on the channel, and stuff that smells very close to its original, but sometimes it takes a day or two. All right, let's add some Vertofix. There's a fair bit of Vertofix in here. It's 0.3 grams or about 4% of the fragrance. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna give this a swirl. Not that one. Let's see. I would wear this. Whether or not it's Eau Sauvage, it's a little too spicy to me. It's a little too, there's too much heart note. There's too much geranium, like phenethyl acid, to, you know, there's only a splash of that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe it's the caraway. There's something, the Eau Sauvage I know is just a little brighter, a little more lift. Ah, it's so close though, it's so close. Let's see, does the Vertifix affect it? It's subtle, but there is a little extra oomph there, a little smoothness.
Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna put this, put this per usual, put it in a bottle, let it age. I'll put some on the skin and um, we're gonna go from there. We're gonna see, you know, we're gonna see how it ages, how it matures. Um, thanks for joining me, friends. Until next time.